Okay, so we are recording today's session. So if you need to step away for any more, uh, any reason, you can do so. And this recording will be available uh, on our website next week. So again, welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Lewis. I am the Program Director of Performing Arts at Mid-Atlantic Arts. I'm also the Accessibility Coordinator. I'm a white woman with short brown hair, and today I'm wearing a khaki-colored collared shirt. I'm zooming in today from my home located on lands known as Baltimore, Maryland, and I want to acknowledge the legacy of the Piscataway and Susquehannock peoples on this land, and uh, as well as the enduring presence of the Piscataway, Lumbee, and Eastern Band of Cherokee communities uh, in Baltimore City today. So I'm happy to welcome you to today's webinar on the 2024-2025 Arts Connect program. I'm here with my colleague, Sarah Tune, who is the program specialist at Mid-Atlantic Arts. And today we're going to share what this program is, who is eligible, how to apply, and how adjudication works. I'll have about 40 minutes of content to go over with you, and then we'll have the rest of the time for questions. You can put questions in the Q&A at any time, and we'll look at how to do that in just a moment. Uh, this webinar is meant to serve as an overview and a resource. Before applying, please make sure to review the Arts Connect guidelines at midatlanticarts.org. You can also reach out to me at any time with your questions or concerns about the program. My email is slewitis at midatlanticarts.org, and I'll share it a few times throughout this program. It's also going in the chat now. Um, if you prefer a phone call, you can also reach me at 410-539-6656, extension 110. So for today's webinar, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. We also have live captioning provided. Uh, Katie is here with us. So to turn on your live captioning, go ahead and go to the control bar of your Zoom screen, select more, and then select show captions. Throughout your Arts Connect application process, uh, if you need accommodations of any kind, please do reach out to me uh, at the email that is listed um, or, or by phone. We do request accommodations to be made uh, no later than two weeks prior to the application deadline. Now, before we dig into Arts Connect, I want to share a bit about Mid-Atlantic Arts. Uh, Mid-Atlantic Arts supports artists, presenters, and organizations through unique programming, grant support, partnerships, and information sharing. The organization was created in 1979 and is aligned with the region's state arts councils, as well as the National Endowment for the Arts. Mid-Atlantic Arts is one of six regional arts organizations. We combine state and federal funding with private support from corporations, foundations and individuals to nurture diverse artistic expression while connecting people to meaningful artistic experiences throughout the region. Uh, you can learn more about Mid-Atlantic Arts and our work at midatlanticarts.org and about all the regional arts organizations or RAOs at the RAO website at usregionalarts.org. I do encourage you to check out the RAO website because it has lots of opportunities for organizations all across the country uh, that you might be interested in learning more. So now let's talk about the Arts Connect program. This program is a presenter-led, consortium-based grant opportunity. It is funded through the NEA's Regional Engagement Program, which is formerly known as the Regional Touring Program. You can find more about the REP program uh, through the NEA's website, which is going in the chat. This program is intended to support artists' tours through the Mid-Atlantic region and to support presenters' engagement of artists and communities. So here are some important dates for Arts Connect right off the top. 
the last day to submit to the required project and development listing is Thursday, February 15th, 2024. We'll talk more about what that is later in this presentation. The final application deadline is Thursday, March 7th, 2024. And the project period for Arts Connect supported engagements for this round is July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. In this next section, we're going to talk about Arts Connect eligibility, how to determine whether an individual presenter is eligible to participate in a cohort, what cohort is eligible, uh, whether an artist or company is eligible to be proposed for support through Arts Connect, and whether the proposed activities between artist and presenter are eligible. So let's get into it. Uh, Arts Connect is a presenter-driven opportunity, which means that presenters must work together to engage each other and the artist or company that they want to work with. So to engage with an Arts Connect grant project, each presenter must meet these uh, eligibility requirements. Uh, first, they need to be located in one of the 10 Mid-Atlantic region states or jurisdictions, which are listed here on the screen. Uh, that includes Delaware, DC, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands, Virginia, or West Virginia. The organization needs to be designated by the IRS as a 501c3 nonprofit. It needs to demonstrate organizational administrative capacity to complete all of the project's components that are being proposed. And it needs to be in good standing with Mid-Atlantic Arts at the time of application, which basically means that you don't have any outstanding final reports. So how are we defining presenter for this program? Uh, for this program, we define presenter as an organization that financially compensates an artist or company that is a separate entity from the presenter's uh, operating uh, you know, scope. Uh, and engages that artist or company for performances as well as community engagement activities. So a producing organization that solely creates artistic work or assembles artists to perform is not eligible to apply as a presenter. And then what about presenting history? Presenters do not need to have, to, to have a history of engaging professional touring artists as an ongoing or significant part of their organization's activity. Um, if you do have a history of presenting touring artists, we'll be asking you to share that. But if you don't, we will ask you to talk about what your administrative plan for engaging the artist within your existing staffing structure will look like for you. So an important eligibility change for the 2024-2025 cycle that I really want to highlight um, is that each applicant may apply for a maximum of one Arts Connect applications in the cycle for this round. If you've applied for Arts Connect in the past, you know that historically this program has allowed for submissions for up to three uh, applications per organization. But in this upcoming cycle, we have reduced the number of eligible applications to one per organization. So the reason for this decision is that Arts Connect in fiscal year 25, which is the one we're talking about today, will have a decrease in funds available to distribute than it has had for the past several program cycles. Those program cycles were still bolstered from the uh, you know, canceled projects in COVID um, and we won't know exactly how much the program's funding will decrease from past program cycles until we get our National Endowment for the Arts allocation, which will happen later this spring. But based on current budget forecasts, it's looking like we will have um, nearly a third less funding to distribute in FY25 than was awarded in FY24. So looking back to last year, we, uh, we were only able to award a little over 50% of requests for Arts Connect. And out of those requests, um, as you know, if you received funding, uh, the majority were only received partial funding, not their full request. And so 
knowing that this year's cycle will have even less to distribute, we wanted to be realistic about our capacity to support regional touring with this program. Um, I know that Arts Connect applications are a lot of work and take a great deal of coordination between multiple presenters, artists, and managers. And so to avoid a situation where we have all of those parties across the region putting in a lot of work only to receive a, you know, a high declination rate, we decided to make this change to reduce the number of allowable applications. Um, I really welcome your feedback on this shift. So please reach out to me if you want to share your opinion or let me know how this change affects your organization, either now or after the awards have been distributed. Um, all right, thanks for your time with that explanation. Uh, going on to consortium requirements, we will uh, keep these consortium requirements consistent with the past two rounds of Arts Connect. So for this cycle, there is a minimum of two presenting partners from two or more mid-Atlantic region states or jurisdictions. One of the um, presenting partners must serve as the lead presenter, but that presenter does not serve as a fiscal conduit. They are responsible for submitting additional narrative materials in the application, it, as well as putting together the work samples. And we'll take a look at that when we look at the application. Next, a recommendation about the number of presenting partners in your cohort. We do recommend that you keep your maximum number to six, um, although this is not a hard and fast guideline. If you have an incredible project with seven or eight presenting partners, you're welcome to apply with that larger cohort. We did have a cohort of nine receive support last fiscal year, um, but we have found in general that uh, applications with six presenters or fewer generally fare stronger. So again, not a hard and fast guideline, just a recommendation. All right, next, let's look at requirements for uh, what artist or company can be engaged through Arts Connect. So again, this is a presenter-led application, so artists are not applying directly, but as a presenting consortium is thinking about what artists you might want to work with, you should keep these uh, requirements in mind. They can be based anywhere in the United States or around the world. This is not a roster program. Um, that includes the artist can be located in the same state or jurisdiction as one of the presenting partners. The same artist must be proposed for the entire consortium, but it does not need to be the same work, and it does not need to be a contiguous tour. Uh, the only artists who are not eligible for Arts Connect support are those who are on the Mid-Atlantic Tours or Performing Arts Global Exchange rosters. And as of today, November 16th, neither of those rosters have been released for the upcoming cycle. So if you have a question about whether the artist you're considering might be considered, that artist should know, but you're also welcome to reach out to me and I can provide clarity. Um, and although you can't double dip your support for artists on either of these rosters, I do recommend that you keep your eye out for the announcement of these rosters because um, they are always another fabulous opportunity to engage and get support for the performing arts in the region. One other eligibility note is that the artist you work with um, cannot be an artist that a presenter has received Arts Connect support for in the past five years within your current cohort. So that artist can have been part of a prior Arts Connect cohort, as long as none of the presenters who got that support are part of your new cohort. So feel free to reach out with questions about that as well. Um, project requirements. Uh, this is what is required for each uh, proposal that a cohort puts together. Each presenter in the co uh, cohort needs to engage the artist or company with at least one performance that is open to the general public, as well as at least one community engagement activity. There are lots of ways to define community engagement, and we'll ask you to do that in your application. And it's also worth noting that both the performance and community engagement can be in person or virtual uh, still with this program. 
Your proposed activities need to meet the following requirements. Uh, they need to take place between July 1st, 2024 and June 30th, 2025. Uh, your activities cannot be a fundraising event or cultivation event. You can absolutely sell tickets. You can absolutely raise money through the engagement, but we ask that you not apply for support for something like a gala fundraiser that is primarily a fundraising event for your organization. We also uh, ask that performances that primarily serve a non-public audience do not serve as your per performance open to the general public. So an example of that would be a school show. The school show that is just open to members of that school community and not the general public would not be appropriate to serve as the public performance, but would be a great community engagement activity. So grant amounts and eligible requests. For Arts Connect, you can request up to 50% of the negotiated artist fee for the engagement, um, not exceeding $10,000. Um, that artist fee must be listed uh, and match your countersigned agreement with the artist that you provide as part of your application. You can also apply for other eligible project expenses up to $2,000. All grants awarded from Mid-Atlantic Arts for this program must be matched dollar for dollar with non-federal funds. And uh, let me give a, a sort of example of what this might look like while we're on this slide. If you were awarded $5,000 from Mid-Atlantic Arts, you would need to match that funding with another $5,000 for a total project budget of $10,000. So that could come from ticket sales, individual donations, or uh, other foundation fundraising or um, non-federal funding sources of any kind. We'll take a look at the budget when we look at the application in just a minute. So now that we've talked about the uh, proposal and what makes an Arts Connect uh, proposal eligible, we are going to talk about the application process. So an important part of the application process is the projects and development listing. All cohorts submitting an application for Arts Connect must post the artist or company that they plan to engage to the projects and development listing um, ahead of the deadline uh, for the listing of February 15th. The reason for the projects and development uh, process is that it gives potential applicants who may not know who they want to reach out to or work with for Arts Connect support. Uh, the opportunity to see what other presenters are working on for this program. Um, this allows for increased visibility and transparency and collaboration in the development process of Arts Connect cohorts. Um, a few notes about this listing. Anyone in the cohort can submit. It does not have to come from the lead presenter. Also, there is no penalty for submitting projects and development uh, submissions that do not turn into full Arts Connect proposals. The projects and development listing is not assessed by our panel. It is just meant to be a public resource for the field that is um, used by presenters uh, and made by presenters. You can access the submission form and the listing itself at midatlanticarts.org. And we're gonna go there now to take a look at uh, what that looks like. So I'm going to switch my screen share to look at our website page. Okay, so here we are at the Mid-Atlantic Arts homepage. We have just uh, refreshed our website. So if you haven't been here in a while, it will look different. Um, you're gonna go to grants and programs, go down to Arts Connect, and then from here, you'll scroll down to the projects in development listing. You'll click here to access that listing. The submission for the listing is a Microsoft form. And the only required portions of the form are the artist's name and location, the genre of work and uh, 
The uh, web presence is not required. These are things that can help you share a bit more information about the artist that you're proposing. And then we do ask for a bit of information about the submitting presenter here. And uh, that's, that's the extent of the required portion. So we hope that this form takes just a few minutes for the presenter to fill out and that it can be a useful tool for other presenters to learn about what projects are going on for this program. Uh, the projects and development listing will also be available on this page when it is uh, beginning to populate. So keep a lookout um, on our Arts Connect program page for that in the next week or so. Um, again, you can access both the submission and the listing here on our, on our program page. Uh, for those watching live, we are going to post the link to the projects and development listing in the chat as well. So you can go ahead and have it pulled up if you already know of a project that you're interested in submitting. Um, one other thing that I want to share uh, as we discuss the projects and development process is that in late January of 2024, we will be hosting an optional Arts Connect presenter pitch session for presenters interested in sharing uh, information about the projects that they are developing. Uh, the date and time for this event will be online in the coming week or so, and we'll also be sharing an e-blast about it to presenters in the region. So if you're interested in participating as a presenter, I encourage you to keep a lookout for that, and uh, you can sign up to present a project that you'd like to get uh, gather other presenter support uh, to work on. All right, now we are going to take a look at the application for Arts Connect itself. So once again, I'm going to screen share here. And now we are here on Mid-Atlantic Arts Smart Simple homepage. I'm going to go into my test account so you can see what the homepage will look like once you've created your account. If you applied in the most recent two Arts Connect cycles, your application process is going to be very similar from the past two years. But if you have applied for the program in the past, but not in the last two cycles, you will need to set up a Smart Simple account um, and create a new account. If you already have your account from the last two years, you'll use that same account. Do not create new accounts. Um, to apply for Arts Connect, as I said, you're, you'll visit Mid-Atlantic Arts uh, Smart Simple page, which you can access by clicking Go to Application here on our website. That'll take you to that login screen we just saw, and now we're inside of an application uh, kind of homepage. So when you first go to apply for Arts Connect, you're going to go to Available Applications and then click on this Funding Opportunities tab. You can see here that there are two opportunities currently open. You'll want to click on Arts Connect and you'll click on this purple Apply Now button. I've already started an application, so I'll show you what it looks like to visit your application in progress. You'll go to My Applications and then you'll go to In Progress. And let's jump in here to our Arts Connect application. And that is how you'll go back into your application once you've started it, if you want to pick up on your uh, writing process, um, if you do the application in more than one sitting. So now that we're inside the application, this is what it will look like when you apply. Uh, when you first start your application, you'll immediately hit the Save Draft button. This is the first thing you're going to want to do. When you hit Save Draft, that will populate this organization tab with all your organization's information that you submitted when you created your Smart Simple account. So really important to hit that Save Draft button ASAP to get your application started. You can check out what is on this page and hit this Update Organizational Profile information if anything on here needs a refresh. Um, then we'll go on to the project tab. This is where you share the basic overview of your Arts Connect proposal. This is going to ask for the name of the artist that you're working with, your project start and end dates, and some basic numbers for the, that you anticipate for the project. 
You'll also include your signed letter of agreement between you and the artist um, or company that you're working with. Um, that letter of agreement needs to include the dates that you're uh, listing here, um, as well as the budget as it is stated in the project budget that you'll enter in your application. The final piece of information that you'll put on this page that I want to talk about is whether or not you're the lead presenter. I mentioned earlier that one presenter in the cohort must serve as the lead presenter for the project. You'll indicate whether or not you're the lead presenter with this button here, you'll select yes or no. We're going to go through this application as the lead presenter today, but I wanna show you that if you select no, you'll notice that some of our required tabs go away. And that's because if you're not the lead presenter, you will not have to submit the lead presenter narrative or work sample questions. That will be the responsibility of the lead presenter in your cohort. But since we are gonna go through the application as lead presenter today, we'll hit yes. On that first lead presenter tab, you'll see that we asked for all the presenting partners in the application, as well as the um, contact information for the artist or company, and a few narrative questions specific to the project, but that relate to the whole cohort. So we'll ask for information about the artist, um, as well as the proposed works to be performed. So we do want to know here if uh, any of the proposed works will be different across the cohort, um, and a little bit more about what those works look like. The second lead presenter page is where we ask you for work samples. So here we'll ask you for the title, date of work completed, um, whether or not this uh, work sample is representative of a piece that will be shown at one of the locations for the project and the password if, if you have one. Um, we'll also ask for a brief description of the work sample here. Uh, we do encourage you to submit a work sample of the proposed work, but um, if you don't have one, if the work is still in progress, or if there just isn't a great work sample, we can, um, we can also accept a work sample that is representative of the type of work that would be torn with this project. The work samples can be from any time, although we do encourage a more recent work sample. If you the next tab that we have is the narrative section. And these are the narrative questions that everyone in your cohort will be asked to answer whether or not you are a lead presenter. So you'll see that we have up, uh, up top, ahead of each question, information about where in the criteria the narrative is going to be assessed. So what you write here in your organization's mission statements um, and the question about how the project advances the mission is how the reviewers are going to be reviewing mission impact as defined in the criteria, which we'll look at in just a minute. So um, the next round of questions are related to the um, artistry of the proposed project. So why do you want to work with this artist or company and what excites you about the performances or the community engagement activities? I encourage you to connect the answer to this question with your project activities answer, which we'll look at in just a second um, on a future tab. We also ask you for some goals for the project. These can be really straightforward, um, like we want to engage X number of audience members for this program. It can also be really broad, like we want to connect this program to a larger project of engaging people uh, from this neighborhood in our, in our community. Uh, it can really look like whatever you are trying to do with this project. Uh, and then finally, we want to hear in your last question uh, here about access for this program. And when we say access, we're asking about access across multiple uh, you know, definitions of that word. So what are the barriers to participation for programming at your space or at, you know, in the proposed venue? And how are you going to be addressing for age, class, disability status, gender, geographic location, race, 
sexual orientation, or other factors that may limit people's access. So you don't necessarily have to talk about every single one of those points, but we do want to hear um, what, what you're doing to create you know, robust access to this program. Um, all right, and I do encourage you as you're going through this narrative section to draft these answers in a Word document uh, or something other than the browser here, just in case your browser crashes and you don't um, you know, get a, a response that you've put in before that crash happens. I also definitely encourage you to hit this purple save draft button as you go through the application. The next tab here is community partners. We'll ask you for whether your partner is in the arts sector or not, um, a description of that partner and whether or not the partnership is confirmed. The project activities tab works similarly where we'll ask you to enter what the name, location and date of your project activity is, a short description of this activity, um, the attendance uh, anticipated, pricing and whether it's confirmed. So for both of these tabs, which ask uh, for you to submit in a list, you'll hit the purple button here and another window will pop up where you can populate with your answers to uh, each of these questions. Next, we have the budget section. So here is where you let us know about what your budget is for this project. Uh, you might use a different budget template internally for budgeting your project, you probably do, um, but this budget uh, template allows us to compare project budgets across Arts Connect submissions um, and analyze how you know the projects are spending money uh, with using the same categories. So that's why we have these categories in place. Um, to review, you can apply for up to 50% of the proposed artist fee, up to $10,000, plus eligible expenses up to $2,000. So this form will auto-populate with what you're able to apply for based on what you put into this negotiated artist fee section. So since we have $10,000 in the negotiated artist fee section, it will show us that you are, the maximum fee that you're able to apply for is $5,000. Um, note that this isn't going to populate until you fill in your expenses section and then hit save draft. So then once you do that, you'll be able to see what your maximum artist fee match is, as well as your eligible, um, other eligible expenses uh, fee. So let's see, scrolling down, you can see that uh, in the other eligible expenses section, uh, this you know, imaginary project has almost $10,000 in other eligible expenses as well. So it is well, uh, well eligible for those additional $2,000 maximum other eligible expenses request. So for this project, the total grant request from uh, to Mid-Atlantic Arch would be $7,000. And that means that the total project income, you know, to match it needs to include that maximum grant request, plus the matching money and any other funds that you would need to get up to that total expenses budget line. I am available to go through this budget section with you and talk through uh, you know, what your project looks like so that we can make sure you're feeling really great about requesting as much money as you, you know, are eligible for and filling out this budget in a way that reflects your project correctly. So moving on to the artist consent tab, here's where we just ask you to let us know whether you've been in touch with the artist or company about this project. And if so, what has that looked like? Um, it's not necessarily a requirement, but it is strongly encouraged that you do work closely with the artist ahead of time. Um, and of course, we do require that you have that signed letter of agreement included in your application. So that is kind of the minimum uh, collaboration that you will need to have done up to the application uh, for the Arts Connect grant. I am going to uh, then show you the For Our Records tab. This is a page that asks you to um, identify the uh, characteristics of your organization that are described by the NEA um, in the kind of National Standard for Artist Information Exchange uh, or National Standard Data Codes. You can learn more about that at this link in the application through the NEA. 
but uh, here you'll select what category or categories your project and organization fits into. So um, the final page here is a certification page that uh, details all of the agreements that you make when you uh, submit uh, and receive funding from Mid-Atlantic Arts, as well as an acknowledgement that this is all true to the best of your knowledge, you'll sign um, digitally here. And once you've completed all of these tabs, you are ready to submit your Arts Connect application. You'll hit submit down here um, with this purple button. And if you've missed any sections, the application will automatically let you know. So you don't have to worry about skipping something. Um, if, you, uh, if you have to come back to something, once you hit submit, it's no problem. Uh, and if you have any issues once it's time to submit and you're not sure why it's not letting you submit, that's a great reason to reach out to us. We can walk you through that. All right, so with that, I'm going to stop screen sharing and get us back to our slide deck. And I'm going to bring us back to our points in our presentation. We'll discuss the adjudication process. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> um, after you submit your Arts Connect application, staff at Mid-Atlantic Arts will review your application for eligibility issues. You'll be contacted if we have any questions. Applications, uh, along with the support materials like the work samples, are sent to panelists who evaluate the application against the program criteria. Panelists make the recommendations for awarding funds that are then sent to Mid-Atlantic Arts staff and then to the Board of Directors for final approval. And then applicants will be notified of their selection status via email by the end of May 2024. The review criteria for Arts Connect include mission impact, artistry, community benefit, and access. The program guidelines have more information about each of these criteria points. And as we discussed in the application, each of these criteria points uh, matches up with a section of the narrative in the application. So I really, really encourage you to take a look at those and to think about the criteria as you're developing your project. That includes developing your public performance, your community engagement activities, how you're collaborating with your cohort, um, and really what you want this project to do, um, going back to that goal section. So uh, for those of you in live, we'll also put the mission, vision, and guiding principles of Mid-Atlantic Arts in the chat. Um, so you can take a look at how that relates to this program as well. So, um, Arts Connect pro uh, projects will be evaluated and adjudicated in two tiers, uh, projects with consortiums uh, averaging fees at or under $10,000, and then consortia with artist fees averaging of above $10,000. Uh, by adjudicating in two groups, we create space for projects with similar artist fees to be adjudicated next to one another, which create a more equitable grant distribution um, across project sizes. Um, in particular, making sure that some Arts Connect funds are available for projects with smaller artist fees. So um, I also want to note that it's important to, to understand in this program that Arts Connect applications are initially adjudicated individually, but funding decisions are made as a cohort. So we review each applicant's, you know, responses to their narrative questions, et cetera, um, individually, and then our cohort will look together, uh, or excuse me, our adjudicators will look together at each cohort and adjudicate whether or not a cohort receives funding. Um, all together. So the whole cohort will receive funding or no one in the cohort will receive funding. Um, and this is in order to support the tour of the artist and to um, you know bolster those partnerships across presenters. So um, I also want to go ahead and share that in terms of notification and payments and final reports, 
you will receive notification of the status of your proposal by the end of May 2024. And if awarded, 90% of the funding uh, that you receive will be made at the start of the grant period. Um, and then the remaining 10% will be awarded um, once you've submitted your funding award. So once again, here are some important dates and deadlines for Arts Connect. The last day to submit to the required projects and development listing, Thursday, February 15th. The final application deadline, Thursday, March 7th. And the project period is going to be July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Um, before we get into questions, which I do encourage you to start putting in the Q&A box, um, you can also add to them as we get into the Q&A section. Um, on Thursday, December 5th, we'll have a webinar for our special presenter initiatives program, which is open to performing arts presenters based in DC, Delaware, Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands, and West Virginia. Um, additionally, the Mid-Atlantic Tours presenter webinar will take place on December 5th from 11 to 12. If you're interested in that program, I recommend that you join up for that. And um, PS, you'll keep a lookout for the Mid-Atlantic Tours roster to be announced next week. We're really looking forward to that. And finally, I wanna let you know about a new program that Mid-Atlantic Arts has collaborated with the other five regional arts organizations in the NEA to create, which is called Arts Here. Um, this is a program that will award 95 nonprofit organizations with non-matching grants of $65,000 to $130,000. Um, these are for specific projects that will strengthen the organization's capacity to sustain meaningful community engagement um, and increasing arts participation for underserved groups and communities. So if that sounds like the work that you do, please, please check out Arts Here. Um, the link for all of these webinars uh, to learn more about these programs uh, are all going in the chat. So this is the, um, the last slide I have for us today. Um, I encourage you to go to the Arts Connect program page at midatlanticarts.org to check out the guidelines. Again, it's important that you read through those guidelines to make sure that you are covering all uh, aspects of eligibility and program requirements. And please, please reach out to me with any questions at all. We can set up a one-on-one -on -one chat to talk through your program, your project, um, or to think through, you know, how you might get other partners to support or, you know, whether your community engagement, you know, activities are available, anything like that. So with that, I'm going to leave the screen share and get into this Q&A. I see we already have a few uh, questions, and so I'm going to check them out. So our first, um, our first question here is, uh, is the part, is part of the goal of limiting applications to be able to give more fully funded awards to successful applications for FY25 or simply to reduce the number of rejections? This is both and. Um, we would really like to do better to award when projects are recommended for funding, we would really like to award the funding in full. Um, in, the, in past years, we have sometimes awarded 70%, say, of the grant request to an, you know, otherwise successful applicants because we want to stretch those dollars that we have available to award. And maybe that successful applicant was, you know, ranked slightly lower than some other applicants um, who were recommended for funding by our panel. So this year, we'd really like to try to um, award more projects in full um, than we have in the past. Uh, we also are hoping to, you know, bring that total number of awarded projects a bit further up from that 50% award rate. Um, all right, so we've got a question from Emily Cruz. Hi, Emily. Um, does every presenter in the cohort submit an application for one project or only one member of the cohort applies? This is a great question. So let me let me break this down. We, uh, we do need an application from every member of the cohort. Every single applicant is going to submit the application that you saw there on your screen. What is different for one member of the cohort is that they will serve as the lead presenter, which means that they will fill out the additional questions of the 
narrative uh, for the cohort, as well as the work sample questions. So uh, yes, everyone applying in your cohort needs an application, and that lead presenter has a bit more of an application to submit. Um, we have the next question here about what counts as a co-presenter? Can it be an artist or company? Um, so the presenters in the cohort are all part of the cohort, all part of the presenter. Cohort, each of those presenters needs to be an organization that is separate from the artist or company that is being proposed. That means that the work that is being presented cannot have been developed uh, or, or funded, uh, you know, inside of the normal operating budget of one of the uh, presenting partners. So the presenters are, are separate entities that bring the artist or company into their community to present the, the, the live performance, as well as the community engagement. So the artist or company does not apply directly for this grant. It is only the presenter that applies. Um, and please uh, add to the Q&A if you have further questions about that. Um, Lowell, the Arts Here and Tours webinar are at the same day and the same time, uh, and you may well be right, and I am so sorry if that is the case. We will adjust for that, but I will say that we are also um, going to be uh, recording both, so we will get to that, and thank you for catching that. While we're waiting for other questions to come in, I'm actually just going to double check that that is in fact the case. Um, and while I'm looking at that, I see a follow-up question for Emily. So each presenter creates a budget only for their portion of the project. Exactly. So what your budget for your um, for your portion of the project will just be for your engagement with the artist. So just the artist fee that your organization is providing the artist, um, just the you know the staff time, the rentals that your organization will incur as part of this project. Um, we don't see at any point the, the full consortium's project budget altogether. Each budget is unique to the individual presenter within their individual application. Hey, Sarah, this is the other Sarah speaking. The Mid-Atlantic, is, is the question asking about the Mid-Atlantic Tours webinar? Yeah, we're looking for the, the date for the um, Mid-Atlantic Tours webinar. And I'm happy to share that this was in fact a typo on my um, webinar materials rather than an error in scheduling in general. The Arts Here webinar is on November 30th um, at 2 p.m. And the Mid-Atlantic Tours webinar uh, is later in December. So you can, again, uh, register for the Arts Here informational webinar um, on the link that I'm putting in the chat right now. Oh, and it's already fresh in the chat from Sarah T. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, I can put that in there. The yeah. Mid-Atlantic Tours presenter informational webinar is uh, December 7th at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and I'll put that I'll put that in the chat. Great. Thanks for clarifying, Sarah. And I thanks for scary. <laughs> okay. And then, okay, great. We have another question. And please do keep the questions coming. We have an attendee ask, sorry if you've addressed this already, but is each presenter awarded their own funds or is it for the project as a whole? So each presenter is awarded their own funds for this program. So the consortia will be awarded in you know, each presenter in the consortia will receive funding or none of the consortia will receive funding, but each grant is made as an individual grant to each individual applicant. So you, if you apply for a grant for, um, you know, $7,000 for Arts Connect, like in the example that we saw in the budget, that would mean that your artist fee with, um, directly with the artist would be $10,000, that means you're receiving $5,000 of Arts Connect subsidy. And then if you have up to an additional $2,000 of other eligible expenses, you can also receive that 
on top of your artist fee subsidy. So that would make a total artist fee, uh, or excuse me, a total grant award of $7,000. Your organization would receive that $7,000 directly from Mid-Atlantic Arts. And everyone else in your cohort would receive their grants directly as well, based on what their budget looks like for the project. Your budgets don't have to be identical. Um, in fact, they probably won't be, depending on the needs and scope of the way that you're working with the artist inside of your organization. So um, again, I'm really happy to like look at the budget with you as you go through it and answer any questions that you have about how that breaks down. But in terms of awarding, yes, each grant, once awarded um, funding, is made separately to each organization. All right. Any other questions for our Q&A? Okay, great. Um, we have a question uh, from Emily. Again, thank you, Emily. Do you recommend that if we are new to this process that we look for a lead presenter to partner with? And how would we find works to partner with? So I think you definitely can tap an organization for partnership who has done this before, but you also can totally be the lead presenter even if you've never applied for Arts Connect before. If you want to do that, I am super available to meet with you and talk with you about how this works in a little bit more, you know, in even more detail, go over the specifics of your project and make sure that you feel super confident about being that lead presenter. Um, I would say, in terms of finding other organizations to partner with, there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, you can, you know, the best way is to submit your projects to the projects and development listing, and also to check out that listing to see what other organizations are working on. But since that, you know, that resource populates as people fill it out, you may also want to do some research on your own about organizations who've received Arts Connect funding in the past. You can see that through our website on the current grantees tab. You can see what organizations are currently working with Arts Connect funding and reach out to them and see if they'd be interested in partnering. Um, you can also think about who's doing great work in the region outside of your state or jurisdiction who you might wanna partner with and reach out to them and see if they'd be interested in working with you on presenting the same artist um, to benefit from this grant support. Um, again, the presenter does not have to have a history necessarily of presenting um, performing arts, as long as they have a, a plan in place for supporting the project within their current staffing structure. Um, if they do have a history of presenting, that's also fabulous. Okay, um, next we have a question, is the benefit, is it beneficial for all presenters to have a common resource or outreach activity to tie the cohort together, or is the commonality simply presenting the same artist? That's a great question. You certainly can do that, and you don't have to. Um, the, the commonality across all presenters in the presenting cohort is that you are presenting the same artist. The idea here is that through this program, artists get an opportunity to have, you know, at least two stops, if not more, on a tour within our region. But the, the, the community engagement or outreach activity that you work with, it should be a good fit for your community, you know, as the presenter. So I would say it would not make sense to have everyone have the same outreach activity, community engagement activity, if that activity does not match the goals for one of the presenter, presenting partners, um, because that is how the adjudicators are going to be assessing the community benefit of the project. Like, does it look like this organization has thought about what this work artist is going to be doing in their community and how it meets their goals and their mission um, for their broader work? So. I would say it, it is not necessarily beneficial, but it could be if the project is a great fit for the goals and mission of every or you know partner partner in the cohort.
definitely here for more questions. Um, I'll be I'll be staying on here in our webinar for a few more minutes. So keep the questions coming. And I do also want to reiterate that if you are, you know, thinking about this program later today or next week and a question comes up for you, I'm very available to answer questions via email or phone. Um, we can set up a time to chat on Zoom as well, if that makes more sense. So we can screen share and look at that budget template um, or, or anything else. So uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's my whole job to work on this with you. So please uh, reach out to me and I'll make sure that you're feeling good about getting your application in. Thank you. <laughs> we had a, a question come in, which is just thank you. And Juliana, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for attending um, and being you know, present and interested in, in engaging with this program. Um, it's a, you know, a long running program of Mid-Atlantic Arts. And I know many people have been engaging with it for a long time. Um, and some of you, it may be the first time you're engaging with it. So. Um, we're really happy to offer this webinar and also know that this is just the beginning of um, getting you connected with the, you know, the program and how it works. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, great. Glad that you all are here. I'm going to give it one more minute and then we will go ahead and sign off. As I mentioned, this recording is going to be available on our website um, by, by next week uh, on the Arts Connect program page. So you can check it out there. You can share it with other potential presenting partners. Um, and uh, we look forward to you know, hearing from you from there about what your questions are. Uh, and with that, I want to thank Sarah Tune and Katie for being here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and sign off, but have a great rest of your week, everybody, and take care. <laughs>